Hello there once again and if you don't know already, I'm Scott Florence and I wasn't even expecting this video to be posted today but here we go anyway. And yes I know my hair's a lot shorter now and I look about six years younger but it'll grow back. But anyway what I'm going to be talking about now is some of the latest science news that interested me and I think should interest you too. This first news comes out from the Delft University of Technology over in the Netherlands and it's offering some evidence for the existence of Majorana fermions. And let's take this one step at a time. What a fermion basically is, is any quark or lepton, which I explain in one of these annotations around me. And there are two types of fermions. There's the Dirac fermions and there's the Majorana fermions. The Dirac fermions have their own specific antiparticle, like there are electrons and positrons, but Majorana fermions are their own antiparticle. So if two of the same Majorana fermions were to collide together, then they would annihilate. And really a fermion could be any particle that obeys Fermi-Dirac statistics, and it differs from bosons which obey Bose-Einstein statistics. And you may have heard of Bose-Einstein paired together before because of Bose-Einstein condensates, which I could explain in a whole different video, so I will just skip that for now. And to the best of our knowledge so far, all matter is a Dirac fermion, but we don't really know if neutrinos are Dirac fermions or not yet because we can't exactly force them to collide or measure them very well at all, as one of the requirements for Majorana fermions is that they have to have a neutral charge. Otherwise, when they were created, you'd be pulling a charge out of nothingness, which won't happen. Majorana fermions were first theorized in 1937 by Ettore Majorana, and as part of the experiment, they had to use a topological superconductor, and a topological superconductor is something that is a normal metal on the outside, but on the inside the main bulk of the material is a superconductor. Now basically what they did was they had a fairly good idea of where these Majorana fermions would occur within their device. And the way that they went about trying to detect these Majorana fermions was within the superconductor they had a nanowire, which using various techniques which I could go into but it's unnecessary. Basically this nanowire was being measured for various different properties and the superconductor was cooled to a fraction of degrees above absolute zero and a magnetic field was introduced to it and at two points along this nanowire where the Majorana fermions were predicted to occur there was a strong response. And this doesn't prove anything for certain but it gives a strong indication that these Majorana fermions may exist. Next, something that's been called the first quantum internet has been made, and what this essentially is, is the world's first network between quantum particles. This research was carried out at the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics, and basically the way they did this was they had a couple of particles which they wanted to transmit the quantum information over to another couple of particles, but they didn't want to get rid of that quantum information in the first place, because that's the equivalent of if you were to try and upload an image onto the internet, that image would instantly be deleted from your computer, and would only be able to be on one computer at a time. And this was an issue because quantum information is very sensitive and it can't be cloned. Essentially what they've done is they've used the interaction of photons with these particles to essentially carry the blueprints of the quantum information over to the other particles. The way they managed this was to start off by seemingly permanently trap the atom in question somewhere that it would not be disturbed. And the way they did this was they used extremely finely tuned lasers and then they controlled the emission of single photons from each of the trapped atoms. And then they would be able to send this information off to be received. And this is just the first step for a quantum network. Despite it being still extremely young in terms of the technology at the moment. That's all for now. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions or corrections, please do put them down below or any comments at all and I aim to reply to all of them. I think I got a couple of suggestions for videos to do a short while ago which I'll aim to do but I wasn't expecting this video to come out today because I'm just back from a university visit and I think on Wednesday I'm going to be releasing a video about dark matter and that is actually pre-recorded so you'll see my hair be longer again and you'll see my old chair rather than this newer one. But uh, once again thanks for watching remember to subscribe and like and I will see you next time. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing Majorana right. Is it Majorana? Ma Ma Majorana? Majorana? I'm sticking to Majorana. And, and as part of the experiment, and as part of the experiment, they had to use a topologue. The Max Planck Institute of Quantum Op... Yes. At the... <clears throat> this reach... And I... I think I know what they did, but I'm going to have to double check.
that image would instantly be that image would instantly be that image would basic that image would instant that image would instantly be what stopped me talking that image would s I respond to all of the comments because I think it's important to keep good communication between me and you as a viewer. But what do you think? Do you think I should keep responding to all the 